let's, let's talk about today. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's quite interesting how the Jewish people, how they uh, celebrate Pentecost. See, Pentecost is not uh, referred to the, in the New Testament as uh, the day the Holy Ghost fell on the church, although that is Pentecost, but Pentecost goes all the way back to the Old Testament, right? Can you say amen? It goes all the way back to the time of Moses when he was given, when God gave the Torah to the people. And so it's so important for us to understand that. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're going to talk about that this morning uh, and just to go over some things that we need to know why we celebrate Pentecost, right? Why we know Pentecost. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Acts, the second chapter. Hallelujah. And let's get right into the word of God. Amen. Praise God. And, and let's get all prepared. Again, let's just uh, prepare to receive the word, all of us in this room. Amen. Hallelujah. Notice what it says in Acts, the second chapter, verses 1. The Bible says, everybody have it? Hallelujah. Amen. When you have it, say, I got it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask Teresa if she'd come closer. Hallelujah. Come on closer. Just get closer. And Brother DeMala, come on, take a closer seat also. And let's get around the campfire of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, today is, is Pentecost Sunday and tomorrow's Memorial Day, right? But uh, this takes precedent over Memorial Day. Can you say amen? Because see, this is, this is where the power of God hit the church. Jesus said, told the church to go to the upper room and wait for the power of the Holy Ghost. So it was based out of the obedience of the church that we received the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, Memorial Day, we memorialize all those that have died in battle. And some people know that it's been, it's been a rough time. War is ugly, right? War is awful. Uh, and war is politically motivated and has a lot of political issues. And so men have died, and men and women have died throughout the years because of political divisions and in, in, uh, things that have happened. But the Holy Ghost did not bring division. Holy Ghost brought healing. Can you say amen? Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost brought life to us. Holy Ghost brought in the power from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in Acts, the second chapter, verses 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Uh, they were all together in one place. And so think about that. They're having church in that upper room. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and suddenly, say suddenly. The suddenlies happen. Hallelujah. I like suddenlies. Suddenlies happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Suddenlies that take place. God operates in the suddenlies. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't give up. Believe in your suddenly. Hallelujah. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I want you to think about that. Um, just the power of wind uh, that felt that came in that room. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Say with me, utterance. Hallelujah. Amen. So it began here. It all began in that upper room, right? Remember, it began in the upper room. The power of God, the fire of God coming from heaven came into that upper room. And that's not what we're waiting for. We already have it. We already have the, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is another thing, right? You need to take it, allow God to fill you, because it's here already. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. Verses 5 says, and, they were, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men every, out of every nation under heaven. And now when this noise was abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak with his own language. So there's, there's powerful things taking place here. Now notice this, Peter now, but Peter, uh, verses 14, listen to what it says in Peter. 
standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that are dwelling at Jerusalem, be this unto you, known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose. How many people know when you're in the power of the Holy Ghost, you, you kind of get drunk? Hallelujah. Amen. These are not drunken as you suppose, seen is but the third hour, nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall have dreams. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. So something's happening now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Go all the way. Verses uh, 41. They that gladly received his words were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them 3,000 souls. And they continue, those 3,000 continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers, and reverential fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed came together and had all things in common. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stop there for a moment. And we know that so many things happen, but you see the power of God came and the church was established. The power of God came and the church was established, right? Now notice this. In the Old Testament, the word Pentecost really means 50th. Now notice this. Today or last night, yesterday was the Jewish celebrated Shavuot. Shavuot is very interesting because the day, the night before Shavuot, they read scriptures from the Torah and they remember how the word came to Moses off the Mount of Sinai. Now notice this, out of this, they believe as they're reading, as the sun is coming up, now notice as they're reading, as the sun's coming up, they believe there's a porter, a, por a porter, excuse me, there's that, there's a nor that Yankee, that Yankee uh, sound trying to come out. A portal is opened, and all of a sudden, the light of God comes to the people of God. Now notice this, this isn't quite interesting. At the day of Pentecost, what happened? Well, the fire of God came upon the people. The same thing that happened in Shavuot. Now notice in Shavuot it is a Jewish festival, and, and really it's the Feast of Weeks. It's the harvest festival where they bring in the first fruits. Remember, uh, they celebrate the barley, the ingathering barley, and then they would let the land be at peace, and then all of a sudden they would celebrate the harvest of, of wheat. Now, I want you to think about it. Barley was for the poor man. Wheat was for the rich man. But notice this. All this came together because God now brings them both together and they both get filled with the Holy Ghost in the upper room. People from devout men. Now notice this. The celebration in Jerusalem at this time, they're bringing in the barley. They're bringing in the wheat. There's a celebration. It reminds me of a, of, of a you know, in Houston, we would have the Houston Rodeo where everybody just, just Western. Uh, they had a park called Memorial Park where they literally brought in wagon trains of horses come from different parts of Texas. And so you would go and I think pay a $10 fee to get inside and have all the barbecue you want and get to see all the horses and all the, all the covered wagons and people from different parts of Texas. Just a big party, a party, and then they get together and have, have dances at night. Now it was very, very clean. And now I don't know how it is now, but... But there was no drinking. It was just celebration. Well, this was what was happening in Pentecost. They were celebrating. And all of a sudden, they hear this sound in this upper room, and they're wondering, what is going on? There's a fire. There's a thunder. There's people that are looking drunk. What's going on? Hallelujah. And Peter now tells them about what takes place. And many, 3,000 got saved, right? But notice this. The New Testament, the Old Testament is 50th, which means Pentecost. In the New Testament, it's now 50 days after the Passover. So here they're celebrating the Passover. We celebrate the Passover in, in April. 50 days now comes the celebration of Pentecost. And this is exactly what happened on the T, 
on the direct day, the time that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So really, uh, it, it, the, the new church that was birthed is really a foreshadow of the rapture of Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The church was born on a Sunday, and that's when they filled, were filled with the Holy Ghost on that day. Jesus was resurrected on a Sunday, right? Hallelujah. And so really we see a foreshadowing of Jesus coming and the church leaving. Hallelujah. Amen. So it all goes together. Go with me to uh, Colossians. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, this is most important. M Memorial Day, yes, it's, it's recognizing those that fought in the battle. But really, this is today is the most powerful time for a believer. In fact, the churches should be full. Come on, church. There's no reason to be out of church on this day. Come on, church. Amen. This is a celebration of the church of Jesus Christ coming together. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians, the second chapter, verses 14 says, notice is Jesus blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Thank God that he blotted them out, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. This is Jesus. He nailed it to the cross. He nailed the things that had you bound to the cross. And having spoiled principalities, destroyed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them in it. And notice what it says here, verse 16. Let no man or no one therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of and holy days, festivals, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Now notice this. In other words, let, let no one tell you any different. Any different. Now notice this. These festivals that happen in in the Old Testament, according to the Jews, were really signs and prophetic uh, windows that were given to the Jewish people. Today, we look at them and we say, uh-huh, but there's a remembrance of everything pointing to Jesus. Now notice this, we don't celebrate these festivals. We don't celebrate these new moons, and although some do, some Jewish people today do that, and some churches do that. You know, they take Pentecost, they, uh, excuse me, they have uh, Passover meals and they celebrate that because it's a remembrance of that festival. But listen, you can't practice the presence or the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It has to be God coming on you and filling you with power. Hallelujah. It's an act from God. You can't fake it. It's Him baptizing you with the Holy Ghost and now it leads you all to Jesus. Jesus made that available to you and me today. Hallelujah. Jesus made it available. Now notice what it says in verse 17. It says here, which are shadows of things to come. Everything that you're seeing is a shadow of things to come. Amen? Notice this. But the body is of Christ. In other words, everything that we see, now notice this, all these that we see, they're just uh, festivals, are prophecies and shadows of things to come. That's all it is. You know, God operates in moads. God operates in signs. God operates in, 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 in English it's called señales, which in, Span, or in Spanish is señales, which in English, it, it goes deeper. We say it's signs, but literally it, it, it's an opening revelation when they see something. That's why a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, they take signs very special. To them, it's a sign, you know, some, uh, a bird flying in their house, it's a sign. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, something, something, something. Think about it, right? But to you and me, a bird got in the house, well, get the bird out. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, see, all this, if we can remember, that bird came in the house, there, maybe that bird came in the house to show you that there's Jesus is powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. See, all these are signs. And to us, we Americans, we forget about these signs, but listen, it's all leading to Jesus coming. I want you to remember, Jesus Christ is coming. He's coming. Everything around us is signs. Pentecost, Passover, new moons, blood moons. All these are signs that are happening. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in the TPT, that same scripture that I read to you. All of these were but a prophetic shadow and the evidence of what would be fulfilled. For the body is now Christ. 
Right now, you are the body of Christ in the church, here on earth. And today, we're celebrating the birthday of the church where the body in that upper room came under the obedience of God and received a power from heaven. God released a power to the church, which today you and I are experiencing it. You and I are living it. You and I, you know what I'm talking about? You know the Holy Ghost. You know the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But there's people that are not considering that, that are not looking at that, right? But listen, when I look at you, I look at the body. I look at Jesus. Jesus is the body. Amen. Now notice this, something quite interesting that as we were studying, I say we the Holy Ghost, just, just, it's amazing. Yesterday, Pastor Christine was singing. I heard her singing, beautiful, outside, just singing, worshiping God, and I'm inside. I can feel the anointing, just got, talk. I kneel down before the Lord, said, Lord, speak to us, speak to us, hallelujah, amen. Now notice this, covenant, covenants, giving at, the, at Pentecost. Remember, don't get Pentecost mixed up with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It happened on Pentecost. But Pentecost derived all the way back in the Old Testament. Now notice this, Pentecost, when Noah, <clears throat> when Noah built the ark, God made a covenant. What was the covenant that you and I see today? Which the world d d uh, tries to um, pervert it. It's the rainbow. Made a covenant. And that covenant was made from God to earth. We live on earth. I saw a rainbow just last week, or the week before, whenever it rained. It reminded me of the covenant that he made with the earth. I'll never again flood the earth. Well, I, Pastor, we still see flood. Nothing like the one at Noah. Nothing like Noah, where literally you could see the rings at the Grand Canyon, the mountains where the flood just rose above to the highest mountains. Amen? So, that was the covenant that God made uh, in the times of Noah. Now notice this. It was 50 days. Think about that. 50 days, God came and brought a covenant and made it. Now notice this. Now, here's the children of Israel now leaving Egypt. They're so excited leaving Egypt. And they're in the desert. And all of a sudden, God calls Moses uh, to the mountain. And he brings them the word of the Lord. It was Pentecost. Law was given to the people. So notice this. That covenant now, remember, the Noah covenant was given from God to the earth. Now the covenant made with Moses was given from God to the people, which was the word of God. And notice this. Why is it the enemy fights the word of God? Why is it the enemy fights the rainbow colors? Why is it the enemy, oh, I told Pastor Christine, you know what? We're going to have to change that rainbow color. We're going to have to get to rainbow colors and say, remember Noah. <laughs> remember the, the flood, right? I tell you what, if we start doing that, it'll change everything from, from change, from perverting to remembering. You see what I'm saying? So these are covenants that were given, hallelujah. So the question that, that I ask as I was studying was the law given at the birth of the church? Now think about that question. Was the law given at the birth of the church? Let's look at something, first of all. Before we answer it, let's look at it. And I promise you're going to answer it, right? If you remember, again, Pentecost happened in the Old Testament. I just keep saying this. I want, I want you to think about it. Growing up, I thought Pentecost was the baptism of the Holy Spirit came. No. It was the time that it came. At the time that they were at the room, they were celebrating, the, the people were celebrating Pentecost. So they're remembering Moses, the Mosaic law. And so in other words, at that very moment, now I want you to listen to me. At that very moment, there was a change that came to the people in the upper room. Of course, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Holy Ghost comes, there's a change. Are you listening, church? Whenever you're speaking tongues, there's a change. Whenever you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life, there is a change. But not only is it a change, there's a form taking place. I'm telling you, when I pray in the Spirit, there's a change. And then I know there's a form taking place. There's a form. It's forming something 
that I may not understand in the natural, but is forming something in the supernatural. Can you say amen? And then now something starts happening by faith. I prayed an hour ago and something is happening. I prayed 24 hours ago, something I could see happening. I prayed 48 hours ago, something's happening, right? Now notice this. This is what God is wanting us to see, the similarities of Pentecost. Are you, do you want to see the similarities? Come on, church, do you want to see? Let's look at the similarities. Come on, let's see some similarities that when the law was given, given excuse me, and the birth of the church in the upper room. Let's look at some similarities. Amen. Now, notice this. Only God can do these things. God can plan things through generations and through generations, and later on, we start seeing the similarities. So with that in mind, God's doing something in you that you may not know, but he's changing you. There's a form taking place. There's something happening in you right now that down the road you're going to see. I remember the similarities that was taking place. I remember them. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil doesn't want you to get there. And notice this. Both events, both events happened on a mountain. And notice this. Moses got the law at Mount Sinai. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost came upon Mount Zion. Amen. There's a similarity. Right now, you're hearing similarities, but also this is a historic event for us to remember. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, quite interesting. Both events received something. The Israelites received the Torah on the mountain of Sinai by fire. Do you remember that? The fire that came in the hand of God wrote on that stone wall. It happened. But now, on the New Testament, the baptism of the Holy Ghost came by fire. And now the fire of the Holy Ghost was written in our hearts by God. Both similarities. So, so enjoy the similarities. Enjoy. You, you, he had you it in, at my, in mind when he was at, with Moses on, Torah, on the Torah. Both events on the same time. Now, this is quite interesting. Both events had something to do with 3,000 people. In the desert, they were worshiping the calf. And 3,000 died. Now, I thought about this. Says, wow. Now, when Peter stepped out of the upper room at the, at the power of the Holy Ghost, 3,000 souls came to Jesus. Similarities. Now, is this something that's just happened by coincidence? 3,000 souls went into the ground, died, perished, just like that. The, the ground opened up. Why? Because they came against the Torah of God. Now, over here in the New Testament, they received the Torah of God, which is the Word of God. And they received it, and they lived. Hallelujah. Amen. You think both events? Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at something. Both events had, had a lamb. In the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they got a sacrificial lamb. Put the blood of the post. Blood represents... Protection from death, life, life forevermore. And then we see another sacrificial lamb that was laid on the cross. <laughs> Come on, church. Amen. The blood of Jesus was shed. The blood of Jesus was shed on that cross. That gave us purity, forgiveness of sin, uh, sanctification. Hallelujah. Amen. See, God doesn't make mistakes. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Go back to the Old Testament on the Mount of Sinai. The finger of God wrote the Torah, the Word, hallelujah, and brought forth the Ten Commandments. Why do you think the enemy hates the Ten Commandments today? Why do you think people are opposing it and trying to justify their life to, to change the Ten Commandments? And they get mad when schools put up the Ten Commandments. They get mad when, when City Hall puts the Ten Commandments. They get mad when the courthouse goes back. To, oh, come on, church. They get mad. They get mad. They get mad. They try to, because see, it's in their face to know 
that they're facing God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we find the finger of God riding upon our hearts. Can you say amen? The heart of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? So, so uh, let's go on record right now. Let's go on record. Say with me, amen. Go on record with me. Huh? Fire is good. <laughs> say with me, the fire is good. Fire of the Holy Ghost is good. Pastor Christine said, let the fire, she said, let the fire just burn everything out. Everything out that is not of God, let it burn out. Hallelujah. Amen. And also fire out of control is destructive. You get the devil's fire that's out of control, it's destructive. Amen. But I believe at the upper room, there was a fire that literally lit the, lit the hearts of many believers. 3,000, then we find another 3,000, and then we just keep the church growing. We see the church growing, growing, growing. So our history goes back all the way to that upper room. If you want to know why the Oasis Center is birthed, it's birthed all the way back from the Oasis, from the upper room. Come on, church, can you say amen? Let's look at Acts. Go with me to Acts, the second chapter. And this is where it all began, and we read it earlier. Hallelujah. Acts, the second chapter. Are you with me, church? Now, this is what it says in verse 14. Acts, the second chapter, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, all the men, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. What words? The words of God. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is about the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophets Joel, or Joel. Now notice this. Hold your finger there and go to Joel. Let's go to Joel. Let's study the prophecy that was given to Joel. Can you say amen? Now notice this. It, 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 it says here, now let's go back, go back to Acts, the second chapter, and hold your finger in Joel, put, put, or put a marker there, hallelujah, amen. And notice something here, so, so powerful. And the Bible says, and it shall come to pass, in the last days, say God, that I'll pour out my spirit, amen, and I'll pour out my, of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams, or shall dream dreams. That's going to happen. That's happening now. And, and on my servants, and on my hand servants, I'll pour, out, I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That's happening now. And then he goes on to say something here, and I'll show wonders in heaven, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor and smoke. So now, now, He's repeating Joel, but Joel now is talking about the coming of Jesus. So he has to repeat the coming of Jesus. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great, that great and notable day of the Lord's come. Verse 21, say with me, and it shall come to pass. Say it with me. It shall come to pass. Say it again. It shall come to pass that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. So in other words, He's repeating the prophecy that Joel gave. Prophecy is being fulfilled at the reading of this in the upper room. And the body of Christ begins its, its, its journey toward the receiving of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand something. Up to this point, no one knew Jesus was going to come. Up to this point... Only the disciples knew that he died and knew, resurrected and got orders and told to go back to Jerusalem. But they knew something was going to happen with Jesus, but nobody else knew. If you lived in Jerusalem, you didn't know anything. All you know, the Jewish man that did miracles died. And now there's a rumor saying that the roll, the stone was rolled away and he came to life. And many people are saying that they saw him and saw him and saw him. We don't know if that's true, but I don't know. See, no one knew nothing. So here was now the prophecy being fulfilled of Jesus coming because he talks about 
things that will happen when, before Jesus Christ comes. That's a prophecy that is being fulfilled now. You're starting to see these things happen that Joel talked about, that Peter talked about. So the only thing left is Jesus Christ coming. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm telling the church on its birthday, Jesus Christ is coming, church. Don't give up. Don't get weak. Don't back down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Hold on. And notice this. If you'll hold yourself there, just hold yourself, Joe, we're going to come there. The modern Jews, or the Jews, excuse me, which are Jews, on the eve of Pentecost, as I said earlier, they read scripture, they read scripture during the Shavuot, right before the Shavuot begins, right? It's amazing. I want you to think about that. They read scriptures and they reach a, they believe they reach a spiritual time when the sun comes up, as I said earlier, and the portals of heaven are opened and they receive a blessing from God. Every Jewish person, they believe it. They receive a blessing from God. But for them to get the blessing of God, they got to get in the word. You're in the word now. As a believer, you are the word. Jesus is the word. He's brought a blessing on you. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich and he has no sorrow to you. Can you say amen? And notice this. We believers... And those Christians in the New Testament received a blessing from God. Folks, listen, when I got saved, my life changed. And that was important. But I'll never forget receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, speaking in tongues. My life made a radical change. And people say, well, how did that happen? God changed my life and he's still changing my life. And still there's more change to come in my life. Same things happen to you. Hallelujah. Amen. But notice this. Go with me to, to Joel now. Joel, the second chapter, verses 28. There's a, there's a key that I want you to look at. And it shall come to pass afterwards. You just read in the New Testament, it says in the last days. But notice what it says. And it shall come to pass afterwards. In the New Testament, it says, in the last days. So Joel is telling the church, afterwards, when Jesus Christ comes, and you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, when it's proof of your children prophesying, and old men, young men having visions, dreams, that's the power that's coming on you. And he says this. Now, I want you to underline what it says here. And it should come to pass afterward that I'll pour up my spirit upon all flesh. He's saying, after Jesus resurrects. After you go to that upper room, I'm going to pour it out on you. And now in the New Testament, if you just read, it goes in the last days. The afterwards has already happened. Look, think about that, church. It's no longer a past tense issue. It's a happening now. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you've never spoken tongues and you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can have it now. Come on, church. You can have it now. So in other words, Joel is speaking to the Israelites and giving them prophecy of the deliverance that Jesus Christ is coming, which is he's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. But he's already come. Say me. He's already come. He's already come. Jesus has already come. It's not an afterward. It's about in the last days. So I can tell you this. It's not about afterwards. He's already come. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is coming. So how can we put it all together? Go back to Acts now. Go back to the Acts, the third chapter. Are you with me, church? Verses 19. Something happened in that upper room. The power of God fell. It wasn't just little, little fires. It was pot fire from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to think about it. You know, in, in a meeting, you feel the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, everybody's talking in tongues. Oh, gosh. What the world calls glossolalia, which is speaking in tongues. People that don't understand tongues, they're saying, that they're, they're, used, they're saying the glossolalia things. They don't understand it. That's why it's so important for you to speak in tongues all the time. Amen. And notice this. In Acts, the third chapter, something happened. Peter gets out and preaches such a powerful message. But notice what he says in verse 19. And I have a highlight. He says, repent you therefore. 
and be converted, changed, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Notice, fo notice folks, refreshing has come now. We've been baptized of the Holy Ghost. We're full of the Holy Spirit. We speak in tongues. Now the only thing left is Jesus Christ come, is going to come. Refreshing has come. Oasis called a place of refreshing, amen. But refreshing has come. You're refreshed now. Even if we're living in a dark, ugly world, we're refreshed because we know the darker it gets out there, the closer it comes, we get to Jesus Christ coming, right? So he says, for that must happen. Whom the heavens must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all, his holy prophets since the world began. Folks, listen, you're getting ready to get restitution. Come on. Now, I want you to listen to me right now. I want you to listen to me right now. Whenever there's something done in the natural, it's a sign of something happening in the supernatural. Whenever there's earthquakes, there's a sign of the supernatural that's taking place. See, the enemy is tr always trying to confuse mankind, trying to pervert mankind. Remember the rainbow? Today we have the rainbow many people don't like. Come on, church. I like the rainbow because it reminds me of the sin that took place when that God promised us no longer again. Amen. So in other words, that's what it is. I, I don't care what people think about the rainbow. I know what the rainbow represents to me. But notice this. Notice this. With this in mind, we have to see something, something so powerful. Jesus Christ is coming. Come on, church. Restitution is coming to your life now. Now, let me ask you something. What, what's going on right now in the battle of some states right now? Restitution. One of the greatest things that they're trying to do is restitution of, of people that have had their 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 relatives in slavery that's one of the biggest things that's happening right now native americans also uh, they're wanting they're wanting to to get restitution now, i understand what they're saying i understand what they're saying but all that is a sign of what's going to happen to the body of christ you ought to get excited about that church restitution is coming to the body of christ Come on, church. What you once had and what the devil stole, God says, I'm going to restore to you. Amen. I'm, come on, church. I'm going to restore to you. Come on, church. Amen. What the devil's done and you, lo you know Jesus now, there's restoration coming. So there's signs that are happening in the natural and the devil's trying to pervert everything. I mean, listen, yesterday, yesterday uh, the debt ceiling was, was dealt with. They still got to take it to the House. They still got to take it to the Senate. But little movement was made. Not much, but little movement. And there's still, it's going to be, we need to pray tonight. We're going to pray about that. But I think about that. You know, one of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons why I understand what I understand through this, and what I saw today in the news, is one of the biggest things is this, is the, the, the process of getting people back to work. As a little boy, I needed some money. And I remember my parents could not give us money and all my friends would buy lunch at school and I could never buy lunch. I always had tacos. Mama would make me tacos, they're good today. Today, I'm not embarrassed tacos. Back then you kind of hid because tacos was rare. She would make me potato and eggs tacos at lunch. And you know, I was so embarrassed of those. I'd hide and eat them. Now everybody wants to buy them for like $10, right? But notice this, I remember telling my mom and dad, you know, can, can I, what can I do? She said, well, you can go cut grass. You can go wash cars or windows. Uh, and so I had an idea. I'm going to look for something that I can do. And I found mowing grass. Then it got too hot. My mower, my lawn mower uh, was one of those push mowers. <laughs> so those, that's hard to do. No gas mowers back then. No weed eating back then. It was nothing but machete. So it was a job to get 50 cents to do a front and the backyard. And that was my 50 cents. But then I grew up and, and, and we moved to Texas and I went to work for a gas station. 
at an early age, 13 years old, pumping gas for a dollar a week. Laugh with me, that's funny, right? It was funny, but a dollar a week it was a lot of money for me. But I realized something. It literally helped me to understand that if I don't eat, I'm not gonna, if I don't work, I'm not going to have anything. And then I found out the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. And if you don't know how to provide for your family, you become worse than an imbecile. So I started realizing the Bible is full about getting to work. Getting to work. Beco becoming lazy is not of God. It, it is of the devil. So when I saw the, the issue about the debt increasing, one of the things they're trying to do is put people back to work to reduce the, the limits of helping people that are just lazy. Now, I'm talking about laziness. I'm not talking about disabled. I'm talking about women that can't work. I'm talking about men that can work. How many people know what I'm talking about? I see a lot of men that are well able. They can work. Come on, church. The other day I was in Edmond and there was like uh, five guys passing out little, little, little things around the corners. And, and literally, they're, they're kind of pesty. They go to your window and they stick it in your window and you go like that. And they say, come on. And I'm saying, God, come on, these guys. And I started thinking, these guys are big. Uh, oh, bigger than you be. Big and strong and bearded men. And they're just walking around. Past. And I say, well, you know, what's going on? These men should go to work. These men should gather together and go cut trees and go help people move furniture. Make money that way. This is not the way to work. This is not the way to collect money. It makes people mad. Amen. And I understood something here. This is why we live in a world that is so perverted. But I guarantee you, if we get full of the Holy Ghost, start speaking in tongues, and start letting the Holy Ghost start changing us, Things start forming in us. We start looking and changing things. Uh, things start happening in our walk. Come on, church. You get somebody that doesn't want to work, get them saved, get them full of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost will minister to that person. That person will become a, work, a person that will work and, and take care of his family. See what the Word does? The Word does this. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So, Joel here is, excuse me, Paul, Peter here is referring by the Holy Spirit to the people that are hearing him that Christ is returning. So there he's saying, the end of times is coming. The end of time is coming. And notice this. We find something. So go with me to Exodus now. Something so important here. Now, I want you to think about something. Easy, easy. Easy to think about this. What are we going to hear before the coming of the Lord? Everybody unison. What are we going to hear? Which is a trumpet call. So far, a trumpet call. I heard, I heard a trumpet call uh, in, in Fort Worth, and it literally made me realize that's, that's, the, that's reality. You're going to wake up, and you're going to hear it, and you're going to be changed. Many people are going to hear it, and they're going to find everybody's gone. A lot of people are gone, right? But notice what it says in the 19th chapter, verses 19, going back to Pentecost. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. Now, this is right before the reading of the Torah. Now, let's look at something. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. Moses, say we Moses. <laughs> Moses went up to the mount and the Lord called unto him out of the mount saying, Thus shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how bear you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will keep my voice indeed and keep the, my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people of the earth, for all the people is mine. Now, notice this. What's going on? He's getting the people ready. Can you say amen? He's getting the people ready. Come on, church. Amen. Now, let's drop all the way to verse 19. 
So the people are getting ready, right? Moses is getting ready to climb the mountain. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long. Now here the author says, the voice of the trumpet, which is the voice of God. With the voice of God, which sounded like a trumpet, long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Now notice, this is, it's a powerful reading, this whole chapter, but I want to focus on some things. Two chapters, verse, two verses in chapter 19, verse 1. In the third month. Now you might have passed that up, but if you go to different translations, it says, in the beginning of the third month, so there was already two months. Two months from the time they got delivered from the Red Sea to the time of Mount Sinai was 50 days. And in those 50 days, God spoke to Moses and said, gather the people. He got the people ready to hear from heaven and the trumpet of God sounded. What am I saying? That's the same trumpet you're going to hear. The shofar from heaven when Christ is coming, the trump of God. Come on, church, the trump of God. Hallelujah, amen. So let's look at something. So in other words, this is powerful, the voice of God. Say with me, the voice of God. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians now. Now, now I just want to focus on those things. In fact, that, that chapter is powerful when Moses goes up, literally goes up to the mountain of God, gets the Torah. And he was directed by the trump of God, the voice of God. Amen. Notice what it says that in, in, Th in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Come on, church. This is so exciting about the birth of the church. We're celebrating this. How it, it, it connects to the coming of the Lord, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the speaking in tongues, the birth of the church, and the coming of Jesus. All together. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in, in 1 Thessalonians, the, the fourth chapter, verses 16. Hallelujah. Are you there? Hallelujah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, gosh. You talk about how everybody's going to hear this. Oh, is going to hear this. Except, especially the church. I think what's going to happen, we're going to hear it, and boom, we're out of here. And then those that we're occupying space with the believer, they're going to hear it, and they're going to see the disappearance. I think about that. I think about it. There's been movies made about the rapture, but this is what he says it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's keep reading. Then we which are alive, that's the church living, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and we shall ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. That's, that's our future. That's, that's why the church is birthed. See, see, Jesus is coming for us. He wants us to gather now on earth to celebrate he, the head, we, the body. Hallelujah. The devil hates the church. Oh, I'm telling you, the devil hates the church. Even if the devil, it, it, there's people that are saying, I hate the church. I hate the church. All they're doing is prophesying what the devil has already said. When they say, I hate the church, oh, I tell you, there's people that don't want to step close to the church. But I tell you what, the day will come that they'll want the church. The day will come that they'll want the, they'll want the, they'll want the, 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 the they'll want the, 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 uh, oh God, hallelujah, robokota. They'll want to step into the church of God. They'll want to step into the church of God. I don't know, but they'll want to come where the house of God is. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. They'll want to. Even if it's before the rapture, if it's after, they'll still want to step into the house of God. I think about that. When the church is gone, the physical church will be here. And how many will come and, and make it right? And knowing they got some challenges the next three and a half years, some challenges to make it. Hallelujah. Amen. The trump is the voice of God. Are you with me? Now, let's close it to Revelation, which is our future. I love the book of Revelation. I used to be scared of it because I didn't understand it. And I said, oh, no. But I love it now Is this my future. It's our future. Revelation is four. In fact, the whole chapter is powerful. After this, are you there? Verses one. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Remember what happened in the day of Pentecost? Heaven was opened. Behold, a door was opened 
in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, the sound of trumpet that Moses heard. As it was the trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I'll show thee things which must be here after. And notice this, what's he saying? He's telling John, John, you got to write this down. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that a sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. Rainbow remembrance in sight like unto an emerald. Now we can go on and read the whole chapter, but, but it's powerful. But all I'm, what I'm trying to make a point here is, is that's the first thing that you're going to hear when you get to heaven, church. The trump of God. Physically in heaven now. You heard the trump before when you were raptured. And now the trump of God. Amen. And so, why do we celebrate Pentecost? I sent Dee a picture this morning of a dove, and I said, no, 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 no. Uh, later on, I said, no, no, no. I, uh, there's more than just a dove. There's got to be that fire. And then I found that one. I said, that's it right there. That's it right there, the fire of God. The fire of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The fire of God. Now notice this. The fire of God purifies. You know, I, I was a hunter. I loved camping. And I've always noticed that the hotter you get the fire, the fire blazes high. And it lasts longer while you're sleeping at night. Wolves and dogs and pigs and coyotes and rattlesnakes cannot come around the fire because the fire is hot. The devil cannot get close to that fire. The enemy cannot send demons close to that fire. So it's imperative that we have the fire of the Holy Ghost on us. It's imperative. Can you say amen, church? Amen. What are we doing today? We're celebrating the arrival of the Holy Ghost that happened in the upper room. The fire that came and baptized all of them and they spoke in tongues. And that same fire is in us today. That same fire transformed us. That same fire we receive. That same fire we speak it. Go ahead and stand up, church. That same fire. Amen. Amen. That same fire speaking in tongues. When you and I speak in tongues, oh gosh, the enemy hates it. He abhors it. But it's power. It's fire. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're burning all the, the shaft of the devil that comes around you. When I pray in tongues, I know things are forming in my life. Things are changing. Things are happening for me for the better. And there's a protection of a ring of fire around me. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the devil hates all this. There's always a perversion of that. There's always a trying to show this. Whenever there's beautiful rain, there's destructive rain. Whenever there's beautiful sunshine, there's D destructive sunshine. You know what I'm talking about? Whenever God does something beautiful, the enemy always tries to prove why. And then everybody talks about the negative part. You know, like I'm talking about, that takes place. But today, we celebrate Pentecost. This day, this day, this day, this day, this day. I want you to think about it, just like you celebrate anything else. A birthday of a child. Just like you celebrate uh, your anniversary. You celebrate, you, you remember something special, you celebrate it, you, you go all out with it. I want you to today to celebrate what he did for us. It all ties to Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost. The baptism coming to us of speaking in tongues. Yes, we were transformed, and that's important as, an, as, a, as a person that was an unbeliever. That was important coming to Jesus, but now... What's so important as a believer is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's where the church was birthed. I love the church. I love the church. I love everything about the church. It's a, it's a, it's a memory. It's a reminder of the body of Jesus inside. Yesterday we came and cut the grass. and Pastor Christine came downstairs to clean the church. And, oh, we started the days off so beautiful. Just, just so beautiful doing the things of God at the house. And then I did my personal cutting my grass at home. <laughs> oh, and then I helped my son move. Oh, but I told Pastor Christine last night, oh, you know, I'm refreshed. Although we did so much, I'm refreshed because 
I got to start the day off with Jesus, going to the house of God, beautifying the house of the Lord. Yes, it's just a physical building, but this physical building houses the body of Jesus today. I'm expecting, expecting the body to reverence the things of God. I'm expecting the body to recognize the building as Jesus' place. I'm expecting all of us to recognize today is Sunday, Pentecost. Pentecost, Sunday. Pentecost, Sunday. Where it means so much to God. There's similarities in the Old Testament to the New Testament. And then it's setting us up ready for refreshings restitutions and the coming of the Lord. Jesus is ready to come, but there has to be restitution on earth for the believer. We're going out of here wealthy, healed, strong, testifying of the greatness of God. That's why it's so imperative now to share the gospel. Now important to invite people to the church. It's important not to leave the church. As today, I was hearing this morning a report, New York Times saying people have left the churches. And there's more suicide, there's more drug addiction, more divorce, more homosexuality, more perversion, because they left the place of God. You see what the devil's doing? He hates the church. I encourage you to fall in love with the church. I encourage you to tell yourself, church, body, you're going to love God's house. Do everything you can to experience the presence of God in the house of God. Because the day will come that we will be with Jesus forever and ever. And, and I really believe that what we've learned here is going to help us in heaven even more. We're not going to heaven unknowledgeable. We're going to heaven knowledgeable. And we're going to be using faith in heaven. There's things that we're going to do for the kingdom of God while we're in heaven. Things are going to happen. The millennial reign is a reality. The body of Christ will be ruling. But you have to know it now. You have to love the worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Discourages, discouragement may come because other people have left the church. But you be encouraged. You make sure your life is encouraged and you're encouraging people around you. You keep fighting the fight of faith. Keep standing and standing and standing. But all to do is stand. Just keep standing in these days when people are not going to church no more. When today... We should have had everyone here today. But I don't know why. But I do know this. It's important to be in the house of God. It's important to learn from the Lord. I tell people that are streaming, streaming is only for those that can't get to church, can't find a place, or don't, are sick. You're, you're abusing the system if you're just staying at home and watching online. You need to get to church. Now, if you're sick, believe God for your healing. If you live in a city that has no church or no word of faith church, and it's all just uh, different types of religiosity, then I understand. But there's no reason, there's no purpose that could replace the worship of Jesus together. And I know people don't like when we read the scripture that talks about do not... Do not abstain from worship. People say, there he goes again. No, it's important for us to come together to worship Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Ro shukuta baba sikiti hi lo sabro rabati kiti hiti. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus, for giving us the church. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to be in the church, be among one another. Oh, Rabashite, lo sobronda brinde kita broshata, lam rosso kula raba, lo robosha bra, zi alo asabrota basikiti, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, for we celebrate you, Jesus. We celebrate Pentecost. We celebrate baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. We celebrate the birth of the New Testament church. We celebrate it, Lord. We celebrate it, Jesus. Ribo shamro robo dabasikiti. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give a shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Father, we worship you. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus.